Well, good morning, my muffins. <laughs> um, we're not making muffins today. Don't mind me, I found a tiny twist tie and I am trying to be proactive today. Hang on, can you hear me? That's a good first step. Okay, good, we're good, we're cool. <laughs> uh, a tiny twist tie, because typically my mic cord just gets caught on stuff because I'm not very good at stashing it. And this still is a fairly minimal solution, but I'm just gonna like cord it up and then like stuff it in that pocket. <laughs> Uh, I used to like hook it onto my back pocket because it made me feel more like, like a like professional. But it also got knocked off my butt a bunch, which is not very professional. Uh, Shovel Mage, thanks for the nine month resub. I made a sub baby, indeed. Uh, in that phrasing, it sounds like you've created a very tiny sandwich, and I enjoy that a lot. Uh, Ryan, thanks very much for the eight month resub. Happy eight months. So welcome everybody to my kitchen. Welcome back if you've been here before. Welcome for the first time, if it's your first time in here. Um, this is probably one of the messiest streams I do because, you know, all my equipment's wrong and there is a above 50% chance that my camera will die at least once during this. I do have a backup battery. Um, I also gave it a stronger chance. So I think as long as I wrap this up in under two and a half hours, it should be fine, but we'll see. Um, and this is the first time we're going to be cracking open this bad boy. So this is the Overwatch official cookbook. I'm still wearing my Alliance apron because Honestly, this is probably the most I've engaged with Overwatch in the past year. I am a, I'm a bit of a fake fan right now. Uh, good, how's your Monday? It's off to a decent start so far. How come we're having a baking stream on Monday? I'm so confused. Uh, baking streams happen just once a month and then I'll decide where to stick them depending on my schedule. So usually I'll do like a Wednesday or Thursday afternoon, but now that Thursdays are, um, or I guess a Friday, but now that Thursdays are, and Fridays are raid streams, at least for now, I wanted to scooch it back and then I had something going on Wednesdays. <sighs> Shamelessly gonna use your stream to entertain my stuck at home three-year-old today. What's for lunch? Uh, I mean, so, hmm. Um, the baking is not lunch, but I can show you lunch because I have them in my freezer. <laughs> I make these little, um, these little, uh, like I'll make rice, I'll make brown rice and then I'll freeze them and then I'll also make black beans and I'll freeze those in like the same container. And then I just heat this up, uh, steam or fry a bunch of veggies, maybe like some tofu, throw that in a big bowl. Oh, I can show you my bowl finally. Um, and then that's usually like a weekday lunch. And that way I can cook like five of those in once and then I'm not worried about food. Um, it's not very exciting. <laughs> it doesn't taste amazing, but it gets the job done. Uh, Wendy M. Dove, thank you very much for the nine month reset. Nine months gone too quickly, it flies. And Nita, thank you very much for the bits, appreciate it. Um, so when I am doing that, or indeed whenever I want a big bowl, I purchased myself a large bowl. I wanted one that was just one of a kind in my house. This one was uh, made in Japan or so they promised me at the Asian grocery store. <laughs> but um, I just wanted like a really big, pretty bowl because I find I'm like tossing the rice and beans and veggies and I don't want to just like fling them into the either and having like a wide bowl helps with that. Although I don't really have a spot to put it, so I tend to just kind of keep it on top of my plates and then move it whenever I need a plate. Uh, you know, cupboard space. Not that I can really complain. I do have, you can see like all of my cabinets in this shot. I do have a fair few of them, but you know, we don't have a pantry. All our food's in here too. This is the baking stream. I should, I should give you guys the, um, the briefing. Are you ready for our, for our, for our meeting? Um, I, I also want to show off. I'm really proud of myself. Um, I shouldn't be, but I am. I usually I'm like paging through the cookbook frantically seven times a stream trying to get back to my recipe and this time I took a little piece of um, a little piece of washi tape which is something I discovered recently when I got into bullet journaling and I made myself a little bookmark so I can get back to it anytime I want. <sighs> Excellent. So today we are creating the Canadian butter tart. So that is what the recipe photo looks like. These are supposedly a recipe associated with Farah. Um, who is Egyptian and not Canadian, but she, I guess her dad's Canadian or she visited with her dad in Canada, something along those lines. <laughs> the technology is there to find the right page. I'm a little upset with myself. I didn't do that earlier, but I think I just need to, <laughs> wait, I, I can always keep an eye out for things that can make my life faster. I feel like when you do things on your own for so long, you're very prone to get stuck in habits that don't necessarily work as well as they could. So anywhere that I can, <laughs> you know, change something a little bit and save myself some time, usually a good call. Um, so this version, uh, this version of a Canadian butter tart has actually been done as a tray bake. Typically butter tarts are like actual tarts, like mini pastries with the filling. 
But this one has been done as a tray bake with like a pastry bottom and then you've got the filling on top of it. I'm going to be adjusting the recipe a little bit so that I can share it with my dear husband who is allergic to nuts. So we're going to be omitting the nuts. Hopefully it doesn't ruin things too much. I do have raisins. If I felt worried about the volume, I could put raisins in. I have had raisins in butter tarts before. Oh, the fancy bowl, why thank you. Uh, I'm Canadian, this makes me happy. I am also Canadian and as a Canadian, did not know that butter tarts were Canadian. Although I feel like that's pretty typical, like especially in a place like Canada where, you know, anything that is regional doesn't really, you know, it doesn't, they don't all have maple leaves on them. I guess this does, but they don't all have maple leaves on them. So you just kind of assume that everybody has a thing until you go to America and you're like, wait, what? You guys don't have those? Um, so the gist of this, this says it's going to take me a total of 30 minutes. I strongly doubt that, especially because it's been seven minutes and I've just been talking so far. Um, but I'm not in a particular hurry. I have until like noon or so, so we can take it easy. We can chat. We can have some tea. Um, I am going to pull up a stool while I read through and uh, lay out the basics of our, our premise here. I have enough flour to make this, but I will not have any flour after that. And I tried to buy more this past weekend. We went to the store and flour apparently is one of the categories of items that has been hit by panic buying. Um, Canned food I get, you know, like cleaning supplies I understand. Flour I did not expect. I suppose my, my theory is that people are worried they're gonna be stuck inside so long they'll need to start making their own bread or they just wanna make comfort cookies, which I relate to. I ended up just buying the cookies. As far as dad is Canadian, she would visit him over the holidays and eat butter tarts. Love raisins. Uh, what does the filling have since it's supposed to be a tart? So the filling is, well, butter, um, eggs, maple syrup, brown sugar, vanilla salt, baking powder, um, walnuts typically, but we're gonna omit those. It's supposed to be just kind of like a sweet, dark, rich, chewy, kind of, uh, kind of, I wanna say malty, but I, I've been using that word a lot. I, I'm not convinced that I know what it means. Toilet well, paper's gone in stores. Yeah, I'm glad that we have enough. Um, we didn't stockpile, but we bought one extra pack like when we first started hearing news of people buying it all out so that we're not like about to run out. Uh, no, you wear the Alliance apron because you don't want to get your hoard one dirty. <laughs> My other apron is actually just covered with cats. It's just a cat print apron, but that one, um, it's a bit wrinkly and I don't own an iron. And uh, this one just, just lays flat a little bit better. <laughs> Sounds delicious, my teeth would hate me. Yeah, this isn't something you'd want to eat a lot of. It's definitely not a health food. Uh, the crust has oats in it, so that's something. Um, we are going to be creating our crust by um, rubbing butter into flour, brown sugar, and oats, and then pressing it into the bottom of the pan and baking it for a couple of minutes. So I'm noticing, I, I, I prepare a little bit for baking streams. I like to read through the recipe list and then make an attempt to have everything on it. Uh, that doesn't always go to plan, but we try. One thing I don't do though, is I don't plan thoroughly enough to make sure I have the right pans because I never do. I feel like this is the third time I haven't had an eight inch square pan. I'll probably just do the same thing I usually do, which is use the like the four by seven one. Uh, if you're using butter as an ingredient, are you going to try and brown it? No, not at all. I'm going to be following the recipe absolutely verbatim um, because when I don't, I get into trouble. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Mm. Is it like a brownie? Not really. It's more of um. It's, it's, like a, it's like a chewy, sweet dessert thing. Very good with like a coffee or a tea or something like that. Uh, not balancing when she turns towards the mic. Yeah, I have my mic on one side. So if I'm turning my head too much, it's gonna be a little bit in and out. Hopefully you can still hear. Um, when you start the book, your voice goes up. Yeah, no, the mic is right here. Um, there, I don't really have a better place to put it. I'll try to, I'll try to do this a little bit more. Um, if you have any questions, I can try to help. Uh, baking stream on a Monday. I didn't think that was that strange. <laughs> I didn't think it was all that weird. Uh, that's not all Twitch stream. Mm. Uh, I thought I was the only adult human person who doesn't own an iron. I feel like modern clothes, most modern clothes, I'm going to start um, assembling ingredients here. I'm just gonna try and get everything out. Most modern clothes will, um, don't really need to be ironed. I feel like as long as you take it out of the dryer, if you dried it, um, or if you're hanging it up, you like hang it straight. As long as you take it out of the dryer right away and then like fold it or hang it nicely, most things won't really get that wrinkly. I feel like that was more of an issue with like the button down shirts and blouses of old, <laughs> so to speak. 
Um, but also, I have never... Well, I guess in my last job, my retail job, they had us wear like button-down blouses, like black ones, but I never ironed it. <laughs> I, again, did not have an iron at that time. So we have flour, brown sugar, we have oats, and I am that person that owns like 30 Snapware containers because I'm obsessed with keeping things in them and then refilling them and then having them be all like, I don't know, <laughs> you can see through them. And um, I, for a long time after I grew up and moved out, I just used things from the containers that came in, like the bags and stuff, and I would just use elastic to tie them off. And I was always spilling stuff. Uh, these are my little ones. These are my chia seeds and my flax powder. I put those in like my oats and smoothies and stuff. Um, also they're maracas. Okay. Um, this is my remaining supply of brown rice. Once I run out of that, I'm doomed. <laughs> rice was also completely gone from the store. But we have plenty of food. I stocked up on potatoes. Like, there was lots and lots of potatoes. So I have a handful of uh, sweet and regular potatoes, as well as a big bag of onions. Okay, butter. We got lots of butter, flour, sugar, oats. Um, so we can do the... We can do the filling first, because that's going to need to bake and then cool. So we may as well... Or the, not the filling, pardon me, the bottom, the crust. So, um, I need to get out my pan and figure out what I'm using, really, because we don't have an 8-inch square. What we do have, uh, we have some round pans. <laughs> the idea with the tray bake is that you bake it and then you slice it into pieces. This is not big enough. This is uh, 8 by 6, so that's no good. Um, this one is, hang on, let's... Let's not multi, let's not juggle glassware, shall we? <laughs> I am absolutely headed for doom here. The bigger one is uh, 7 by 11, and I feel like that's usually what I use because I usually feel like it averages close enough and is roughly rectangular, so I think we're going to use that one. They want me to butter it. And I did wash my hands before I started, but I'm going to wash my hands again just because it's hand washing season. Water. I don't own an iron either. I have a $40-ish garment steamer if really needed. Yeah, I feel like my plan, if I really need to wear something and it's got a bit of a wrinkle in it, would be to put it on a hanger in the bathroom and then take a shower to, like, raise the humidity and generate some steam. Um, I think I've done that before like in an emergency. <laughs> uh, oats are amazing. Oats are my new every day. I also have those stockpiled pretty good because it's just, it's, they're like, they're tasty just to begin with and they're also good fiber. And then I, I throw just like a ton of fruit and seeds on it. And then I tell myself it's healthy, which it probably is. I'm not sweetening it anymore, but you can change up the fruit. You can have different fruit. So it's the same thing for breakfast every day, but it doesn't feel like the same thing for breakfast every day. All right, so they want me to butter, uh, butter and lightly flour the pan. So I'm gonna just get a little, a little scoop of flour and keep it on the counter for situations like this where I just need a little bit of it. And uh, for buttering it, I think I'm gonna use my tub butter with a little piece of plastic to spread it around in. Not that this, the idea with doing this is to keep your hands from being all buttery when you are buttering, hand buttering a pan. But in practice, I guess it's, hel it's helping protect the, the butter from the fridge from my hands, but aside from that, I don't know, man. Uh, why do you have those kind of handles for kitchen drawers? I can't tell you how much my pants got snagged in those kind of handles in my kitchen. It, they came with the apartment, we rent. Um, I'm sure if I was motivated enough, I could replace all of the handle hardware and then store them and then put them back when I moved, but I don't care that much. Uh, I will, my mic cable tends to get snagged on them when I'm doing baking streams, but outside of that, I'm not usually wearing something with loops. Me wearing jeans, as I am right now, is an unusual occurrence. Eight days out of ten, I'm usually wearing um, sweatpants, like joggers, and those do not have anything that's really going to get caught on them, so I think usually I'm okay. <laughs> this is a sound. And then we're going to lightly flour it, as they say. I can probably put this back in the fridge. Ah, slippery. 
I'm not very good at this. You don't want too much. Uh, okay. All right, so that's prepared. Now we want to rub the butter into the flour, brown sugar, and oats for the crust. I'm gonna mix the dry stuff and then we'll get the butter going in there. They want half a cup, so basically a stick of butter into one cup of flour, two tablespoons of sugar, and a quarter cup of oats. So let's get a bowl. I guess I'm all buttery and floury over here. <laughs> I have to go to the grocery store like 20 minutes, RIT. I feel that same, but those are awful. I never really thought about them, to be honest with you. I've never, I've lived here for like five years and I've never thought about the handle hardware. I don't think it really bothers me all that much. Uh, bowl. Let's see, like, bigger bowl. Bigger usually better. At least for the sake of not making a mess, which I am absolutely going to do anyways, but that's okay. Uh, how much flour? One cup of flour. And I think that's most of the flour that we need for this recipe, which is good. I'm going to do this in two half cups. <sighs> it's probably for the best that I don't have the supplies on hand to do a bunch of like stress baking because that is one of my coping mechanisms. Like if I'm worried about things, I tend to bake. But after I'm done baking, I will often send things into my husband's office with him to share with his coworkers. And he's working from home now. So there's a, there, right now is not a great time. There would just be like a ton of baked goods. I think we're gonna have these around the place for just the two of us. So I think that's probably enough for any given pair of adults that are trying to avoid um, <laughs> blood sugar complications. <sighs> mm. <laughs> Hazel, I like Hazel. Hello. Uh, oh, Portal Wolf, hope you feel better soon. It is that season, so regardless of, um, regardless of everything else going on, it is also a cold and flu and allergy season, which is not good for anybody's nerves. But a uh, solid, solid chance that's just what it is. I've got a similar thing, um, although I'm feeling mostly, mostly recovered today. There we go. So half a cup. I should weigh, but I won't. Not today. It usually depends on how, I guess, engaged I'm feeling. I have varying levels of feeling like I'm ready to interact with my own life. You know, and some days I just feel like I just, I'm just going to kind of like flail my mental fingers and get like enough done. And then in other days I'm like, I am going to take this time and do X, Y, Z thing in this order and it shall be good and, and structured. And I don't really have an in-between between those two things. I'm either fully on being like overly meticulous about things that don't even need it or I'm just like an absolute blob. Um, okay, so that was the flour. I now need two tablespoons of sugar and a quarter of a cup of rolled oats. Um, to be honest with you, the varying types of oats confuse me a lot because you have lots of them. These are not instant oats or quick oats, so I think they are indeed rolled oats, but they're just getting baked into the crust, so should be fine. So there's our oats. And then I said two tablespoons of brown sugar, which is a tricky thing to measure. Also, I've put things back in a poor order and now they won't fit. We scooch this to the back. I'm gonna probably need, do I need white sugar later? I guess you don't know, do you? You guys don't have the book. Um, I do not need white sugar. It's going to be brown sugar all the way. Cool. That's good. I have lots of that. Aye. Oh, I can give you guys a, I can give you guys a shot. You can see the camera in the background, but you can't see what it's seeing. I'll give you guys the, the in the bowl shot once we're, once we're doing that and you can, you can uh, cringe at how over or under I'm mixing it. <laughs> uh, but given that it's like a pastry like situation, um, given that it's a pastry like situation, my plan is to go with like the standard um, small peas amount generally speaking. Okay, so this is fine. Uh, we're gonna need this later, so I'm not gonna get rid of the brown sugar just yet. But I'm going to grab the stick of butter, half a cup of butter. Okay, so you can do this with a food processor. I don't have one of those. I'm gonna slice it with a knife into smaller pieces so that I can actually like rub it in with my hands. And I'm also gonna chill my hands by running them under cold water before I get started. 
I think is my plan. Um, I am gonna be baking this pretty much right away, so I'm not, it doesn't have to like sit and wait for anything. We're gonna, we're gonna basically get this together, get it pressed into the bottom of that pan, and then we shall um, throw it in the oven for five minutes, only five minutes, because it will bake again after we have added our filling. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of like chop this into tablespoons just to kind of make the process easier. I don't have a pastry blender, and I know you can take two hand knives and like slice them apart in the bowl, but I don't have a ton of hand strength, and I've always found that very difficult. So this should just help get me started. Um, maybe if I line them all up, we can get one more good slice off. And this is also reducing the amount of handling them to some extent. Okay. Oh, you know what I used to do is I used to grate it. That's right, that would have been a better idea. Oh well, too late. Um, I like to take like a big, a big cheese grater. I'm gonna chill my hands now. As though they don't get cold enough on their own. Uh, apron perfection. Okay, you on Discord with an update on my monster. Feel free to check it out when you can. I'll have to see that today. Why is my cold water not cold? Oh, there we go. I was watering all my plants last night, and my monstera and my pothos are both putting on like a ton of new leaves. And my monstera doesn't look like a monstera yet because it's still really young, but um, with all of the new leaves coming on, I felt better about snipping a couple more of the ones that were damaged from the store. So uh, I'm just feeling really good about it. It's, uh, it feels like spring <laughs> to some extent. So let's move this. We're going to rub this into this, and then we're going to press it into the bottom of there. And I'm going to give you guys a bigger view. There you go, overhead view. How's that? Uh, I took off my ring just because I've been washing my hands a lot more and a lot more thoroughly lately. Like I've always washed my hands, but it's unusual for me to usually to do the the back of the hand move. That one was new to me <laughs> for some reason, and I find that my uh, my ring gets really scratchy when I'm doing that. So I've decided to just take it off for a few days or weeks or however long it's gonna be, just so that I'm not constantly like moving it because I don't want to be taking it off and on again all the time. I don't want to lose it. Um, but I also, it helps me uh, not lose it when I'm doing this because often I'll take it off during baking streams when I'm trying to rub, you know, butter into flour and whatnot. And then I don't, I, I usually put it in like my pocket. I'll never remember which pocket that is, absolutely never. Okay. And do you know who Savix is? Yeah, I know Savix. Uh, don't have a rolling pin? Make my own for no more pie to left. Uh, do you have any glass bottles? Like if you have, I've used in a pinch, like wine bottles, vinegar bottles um, as rolling pins, because sometimes you just really want to do it. But of course, that's totally up to you. Uh, I think for a long time I just had, I think it was a vinegar bottle. This was before I was really into wine. <laughs> or before I was into wine that came from bottles. Uh, how are we doing here? This is still like really big chunks. Um, the instructions say, rub the butter into the flour, sugar, and oats for the crust until you have a nice, soft, crumbly mixture. So we're getting there. I think I want my chunks to be a little smaller. But my hands are so cold <laughs> that I don't think I'm really melting it very much. So that's something. Let's do some of that. That might help. Yeah, that's better. I was going for pinching when I need to be like rubbing. Okay. And that'll also make some more flat pieces, I think. When you don't have a pastry blender and you don't want to buy one. <laughs> I'm so anti-kitchen gadget these days. Well, not anti-kitchen gadget. I'm anti-kitchen gadgets that I don't think I'm gonna use enough. And I'm getting to a point now where I'm really mostly only baking for baking streams because I just, <laughs> I, I don't wanna be eating that many baked goods and I don't have it in me to, to only bake like healthy things in front of you guys. Maybe, I'll, maybe we'll get there. Maybe I'll, I'll find ways to evolve to make healthier, healthier baked goods on stream, but I just feel like that's not what people wanna see. Um. All right, we don't want to overdo this, so I think we're getting there. Uh, 
looking for any other existing large chunks. That's pretty pretty close, yeah? Uh, toffee apples. Got caught up in the T and E debates. <laughs> Missed the opening. <laughs> oh, what are they debating today? Kitchen gadgets, gadgets are my weakness. I need to stop because I don't have the storage space. I, when I have too many, it means that I can't find anything, even the ones that I use all the time. I feel like if I wanted to have a ton of gadgets, I would both need to be be doing a lot of crazy stuff to justify it, and I would also want. All right, we're gonna press this in the bottom here. I would also want to um, have like a large enough storage space that every nothing is really overlapping anything else so you can really clearly see your inventory and everything has a very clear space to go back to because right now they pretty much all go between these two drawers and that's also where our knives go and uh, and it gets too full you just can't get anything out of there so that's pretty much pressed in it honestly doesn't really feel like a cohesive dough or anything like that but i'm just not going to worry about that too much um we've pressed it down pretty good so we're going to bake that for five minutes how can i get an alliance apron i would just look around online this one was not an official one so i bought this off of etsy many years ago now well not many but uh, enough years ago that that particular Etsy seller is no more. So I would look around online to see if there's any fan-made ones because as of now, Blizzard does not make them. Okay. Never done fritters, but they're one of my favorites. 2.6 million gold, getting closer to the long boy, but it feels so far away. Yeah, the first half is the absolute hardest part. You're doing great. You're gonna be there before you know it. So that's in. Time for five minutes done with this and next okay so that's gonna bake five minutes and then we are going to allow it to uh, chill a bit Oh, sounds I have my monitor you might hear some feedback actually on the sounds because I have them just coming through my monitor uh, Nina thank you very much for the bits for the lights indeed Um, they want me to pulse the walnuts to a dust we're not doing that because we're trying to not murder my husband. So I guess I'm just gonna skip them and hope that it doesn't mess with the consistency too much. I'm a bit concerned by the pulsing because that means they might be having more of a flower function, but we're, there's really only one way to find out here. Um, otherwise we're gonna be mixing butter, eggs, brown sugar, syrup, vanilla, salt, baking powder. There's really not a lot of other solid stuff. I feel like this might end up being too liquidy. I may mix in some raisins regardless. Hmm, I don't know if that's the right call. If they were individual ones, I would mix raisins into half of them so that I could like see, but this is gonna be like one big tray. Barely made my first million gold. Don't know if I can make it all in time. I, you probably have a good chunk of time. I would assume that you have quite a while before Shadowlands, especially given current events. Um, Blizzard is now working from home and while that does mean they're still working, they may not be able to achieve the same kind of efficiency they always have been. Uh, Catching Games, thank you very much for the nine-month reset. Appreciate it. I vote for raisins. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm just trying to to get, make the batter less goopy because I foresee a goopy batter, and I want it to be slightly degooped. You know? Uh, do you watch Great British Baking Show? I recently started watching. It makes me scared of baking. I love the Great British Baking Show. Um, I think everybody does. I've never met anybody that watched it that was like, uh-huh, no, not for me, unless they were being, like, just intentionally contrarian. It's just so sweet. Um, I, I feel like it usually makes me inspired to bake because I know that I'm not on a time limit and usually nobody's watching me. And also, I can choose easier recipes. <laughs> And it's usually for the best. Okay, so I'm just gonna fetch my ingredients. Oh, oh, I was supposed to soften another stick of butter. There's a lot of butter in these. I guess that makes sense for butter tarts. So I'm gonna pull out the second stick of butter. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, when it comes to mixing, I may microwave this for just a little bit. You gotta be really careful doing that, but you can soften it in the microwave. Um, I'm gonna, well, we'll see. Uh, 
We will also need two eggs, brown sugar, which we still have out, maple syrup, vanilla salt, baking powder. Okay, throw my cardboard off screen into our recycling over here. Uh, let's fetch. So I have eggs in here somewhere. I haven't been eating eggs recently ever since I switched to oats for breakfast, so I had to buy some new ones to make sure that mine weren't bad. Uh, syrup. I do have maple syrup. I do. Yes, here it is. And then... What else did I remember hearing about? I guess I should corral some things. I suppose I could mix it in that same bowl. That bowl just had like flour and flour and butter in it. That seems fine. Salt and baking, did I say powder? Baking powder, just a little bit of baking powder. There's also gonna be some vanilla and uh, maybe the raisins. Vanilla, baking powder. I, one of these days, um, I've always kind of wanted to, ahead of a baking stream, do that thing they do on cooking shows where they pre-measure all the ingredients and have them in cute little like matching dishes. But I think that would cut so much time off the actual stream that there wouldn't be a whole lot left going on. I feel like I spend most of my time just hunting for stuff and, and, and uh, measuring it while chatting. Butter, eggs, brown sugar, maple syrup, vanilla, salt, baking powder. Good. Okay, we're good. So, um... I guess I'll start with the dry ingredients. I'm gonna, it doesn't say to, but I'm gonna mix the wet and dry separately so that um, the butter becomes a later meat problem. So we're gonna mix, uh, I guess the sugar, salt, and baking powder in this bowl. So it's asking me for a cup of brown sugar. Uh, once again, not a health food. <laughs> we're gonna get a whole cup of brown sugar. I'm going to um, dust this out because that one just had flour in it. As far as blizzard is concerned, I think keeping leaks from happening would be their bigger concern. True. Um, I would imagine, though, they must have ways for people to work on that stuff from home. Otherwise, like, this, we could potentially be home for a while. Like, I, I really doubt that this is going to be over in two weeks. Um, and they have, they have, I mean, I guess deadlines can always be moved. Um, that was the end of the five minutes. So let's take a look. It looks exactly the same, but that's fine. It's going to bake for another 20 once we have the filling in, so I'm going to take that out for now, and we can just leave that on top of the stove. It doesn't need to fully cool or anything like that, so pop that out. Ooh, you can see the oats in there. It smells really good. All right, we're getting our cup of sugar into this bowl, and that's the, that's the base of our filling anyway, so there's half a cup. I feel like measuring brown sugar is always more of an art than a science because you can pack it, like unless they're, they've actually given weights, um, you can pack it as much as you want and get wildly different amounts of sugar. It did say packed, and I don't know if I packed it enough, so I might add a little bit more. <laughs> Although you know what? I'm substituting raisins for walnuts, and raisins are quite sweet on their own, so I'm not going to add more. Uh, I don't know if any of my logic's going to work. I should be very clear on that, but it makes sense in my head, so I'm doing it because that's pretty much how my kitchen works. <sighs> okay, salt and baking powder. We are doing a quarter teaspoon salt, half teaspoon baking powder. I have my spoons right here. So that teeny tiny one of salt. I guess I'll pour it over this thing. This is just the flour I don't think I need anymore. I poured way too much of it, which is a bummer. Uh, but usually I'll just kind of pour measure over my bowl, which is a big mistake because that's how you like accidentally pour way too much stuff in. So I suppose I'll do it properly and just over anything else. Half a teaspoon of baking powder. We can mix all that together. Okay. Oh no, I just dumped my half a teaspoon of baking powder into my flour. That's not right. That's, that's incorrect. Uh, there we go. Half, there we go. It's in in the correct bowl this time. That's just, we're making something else with that one. <laughs> uh, the tiny child in my brain is like, ooh, add some other ingredients to it and then bake it and see what you make. <laughs> just like invent a thing. And then the rational part of my brain is telling me to uh, don't do that. Okay, so with wet ingredients, we're going to have eggs, maple syrup, and vanilla, as well as that softened butter and the raisins. I guess I can put the raisins in here. Um, it wanted a half a cup of walnuts dusted. I'm going to do 
um, an unscientific amount of reasons. Probably not too many. You don't you don't want to overdo the reasons. You want them to be more accent reasons and structural reasons. Who knows? Improv. There we go. Some. The scientific uh some. That's probably like a eighth of a cup. Yeah, that's enough. That's enough. Little little yeah. Like an eighth of a cup or so. Something like that. Uh I want a elastic here. Uh, I didn't realize there was a stream. My phone doesn't show me the title. Yeah, Canadian butter tarts from the Overwatch Cuts list. Hazel's Kitchen, Hazel's Rolls. <laughs> I work remotely in a business that works with sensitive information. They give us equipment to do our jobs. Not allowed to use third party anything, so I'd assume it's similar for Blizz. That would make a lot of sense. I've heard of other companies doing the same thing, like giving uh, employees equipment at home um, to use, which would make sense. So for our smaller bowl, I guess I'll mix everything that is not the butter into uh, this guy. And then we'll soften the butter and mix that in later. I really don't know how I wanna do this. I might do this in my stand mixer actually, cause I think that's gonna really help with getting the butter mixed into everything properly. So let's take out our beautiful, our beautiful baby. Scooch these. Stand mixer time. And I want to put my dry in. <laughs> That's not right. To be honest with you, I'm never really sure which way to twist that thing this way. There we go. Um, dry ingredients in here. And then I'll soften the butter and use this to mix it in. And then I'll add the wet ingredients. That sounds right. Or at least that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, so we'll get this in here. Waste of a dish, but that's okay. <laughs> I have lots of time for dishes. And then I'm gonna soften this butter. So basically I'm gonna put it on a plate. Actually, I can put it in the, I can put it in, the, uh, in this bowl or that bowl. This bowl's still clean. Uh, I don't think we're gonna need that bowl. No, that's not right. You can't just nest bowls incorrectly because you're in a hurry. Oh, I almost did it. <laughs> I almost put a small bowl underneath a big bowl on top of a small bowl and then I stopped myself the last minute. I just couldn't do it. <sighs> Are you concerned about the texture since you had to use gluten-free flour? Uh, I didn't use gluten-free flour. I'm using my remaining stockpile of flour. <laughs> when I was at the store, the only flour remaining was gluten-free and I looked at that and chose not to purchase it. I, um, I'm, I'm just using the last of what I have. Although I do have some amount more. There's probably not enough for any given project. I'll probably save it in case I need it for cooking. But yeah, no. I uh, never tried, never tried gluten-free flour. I'm very glad that b between our two, between uh, my partnership's dietary restrictions, I'm glad that both of us can tolerate gluten. We're both fine with gluten. I'm gonna do this for a whole minute at a very low cook power, let's say 20%. Is that right? That's gonna be on for a fifth of a minute. So yeah, and then we'll do one minute. Um, because cook power in a microwave, it only really has on and off, but when you turn down the power, it will turn itself on and off in intervals, which is nice for cooking something that you don't want to just blast for full length. Um, when I'm making my oats in the morning, I put my oats and my water and my fruit in my big dish. <laughs> I actually make it in a two cup Pyrex and then I just eat it out of this because dishes. And then um, five minute cook time, but add a half cook power because otherwise it like boils over. Oh man, uh, husband finished coding school a few months ago, searching for jobs now, not a great time. Mm, thank you for leaving the gluten-free flour, some of us need it. Yeah, no, there was no, there was really no need for me to, to get into it. Uh, using my own internet to work, we get routed through a secure VPN. There we got ourselves a secret agent. All right, let's put that away because I picked it up. And I should really be monitoring my butter, shouldn't I? Because we're not trying to melt it, we're just trying to make it um, sad. So if I poke that, I want to do that same thing one more time. So we're going to do another minute at 20% power because that feels not cold anymore, but I want it to be a little tiny bit softer than that. 
Um, following that, we're going to be adding in two eggs, two tablespoons of syrup, and a half a teaspoon of vanilla. Um, once we've combined everything, we're going to add it to the crust, bake for an additional 20 minutes. And then once it's cooled and cut into squares, they say you can dust with powdered sugar if you like, and that's how she's gotten that like maple leaf dusting. I mean, we did do something similar back when we made the cult here in um, uh, the cult here in We did uh, we did a, a cult here in albatross dusting in cocoa powder on the top of the thing, but that was also a lot of work. <laughs> this, that, that was just for one dusting. <laughs> Uh, can't get more asthma inhalers. People have been buying them over the counter just in case. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful, and I don't know anything, but I'm hopeful. Okay, there we go. That's better. That a lot of these shortages are temporary because theoretically the supply chain should be mostly fine. And, uh, you know, <laughs> as things get restocked, people will hopefully start to realize that it's not your last chance ever to buy something and let everybody have some. Okay, so we're gonna basically try to get this mixed in. That is a good level of softness. It's not melted, but it's also quite, quite soft. I'm gonna scrape once and then mix a little bit more and then start adding in the wet stuff. Uh, it smells good, mostly because it's a pile of butter and sugar. <laughs> Call that good. Okay. Um, let's do the eggs. I have two eggs. I took them out here. I haven't cracked them yet. Um, I'm going to live my life dangerously and just crack them into here. One. And two. Eh, not bad. Uh, that's fine. I can see it from the stream. It's all right. You don't want to over mix, I'm sure, but because there's no flour in this filling mixture, we're not going to be like building gluten. Uh, two tablespoons of maple syrup and then a half a teaspoon of vanilla. Oh no. Oh no, it's stuck. There we go. It's just because it's syrup, so it gets under the lid. I'm gonna have to clean that. You can also use hot water for this kind of thing. I just can't get a good grip on it. There we go. <laughs> it's all dusty in today. I kind of want, I guess I can use a washcloth. Let's pour it first because I'm just going to make another mess. Uh, there we go. One and two. And then I may as well do, I said a half a teaspoon. I believe I did. Yes, indeed. Quite. <laughs> no, that's one teaspoon. Too much. A uh, half a teaspoon of the vanilla and then I'm gonna clean that syrup bottle otherwise oh no syrup on my hands syrup on my hands mistakes I've made mistakes uh, about that much I'm low on vanilla but that's okay I can live with that okay show that syrup to his mm. I love how this recipe is gonna take 30 minutes full of flies I imagine if you are an organized person um if you're an organized person and you know exactly where everything is and honestly if you've pre-measured things and you're a quick measurer then you can probably get this together in like 35. It's got 25 minutes in the oven and they say five minutes of prep time. <laughs> also I'm making things harder on myself by not having the, cor the correct ingredients. All right that has butter, eggs, sugar, syrup, vanilla, salt, uh, and baking powder. So that's all of our filling. It doesn't look super cohesive, but it's mostly blended. I imagine you, you don't want to be knocking too much air into it either. 
So now what we're gonna do is we're going to basically scrape that on top of our crust here and then we're gonna put it back in the oven for another 20 minutes. So I'm gonna put the syrup out of sink so I remember to clean it. I'm going to put the vanilla and the salt away in their homes, their little cupboard homes, which I'm quite impressed. Like my cupboard's not as clean as it was when I completely redid it, but the organizational structure has largely persisted and that makes me very happy. Although I just knocked over my pepper. <laughs> um, raisins don't have a spot because I don't normally stock raisins. <sighs> the allosexuals. You like the new, um, you like the new collection? I haven't bought anything, but uh, I watch the videos because I like to look at the sparklies. Uh, any BDO streams in the future? Not planning any, no. I'm not convinced that anybody, that, I, that anybody wants to see me play anything that's not WoW on stream. Although it would probably be a smart idea for me to branch out just because uh, career safety wise, as a content creator, if you can get into variety streaming and, and video making, that's much safer because then your fate is not tied to the fate of any given company. And it would probably be better to lay down roots sooner rather than later. But um, also, I'm really addicted to WoW, and I really like playing WoW on stream. What am I doing? This. So that is fine. That's not too hot. Let's take this off. We're going to use our purple scraper doodle. You know, scientific terms. And that can go in the sink. back. I kind of like hugging a bowl and then stirring it because this makes me feel like a like a like a prairie woman making bread and for whatever reason that makes me feel cool. Okay. So can you guys see anything? There you go. Uh, so I'm gonna just kind of do a little of this and just get it mostly evenly across the middle and then we can spread it out. This is a fairly lumpy filling and I don't know if that's right. I've never made butter tarts before. I'm a bad Canadian. I've only ever eaten what my grandmother made. <laughs> I never made them myself. I was more of a chocolate chip cookies or bust kind of person or peanut butter cookie, but I don't make those anymore. Okay, so that's something. Honestly, this looks awful. This does not look appetizing yet, um, but as it bakes because of all of the sugar content, it should brown pretty significantly. And I think that will make it nice. Also, this doesn't look really all that. I wonder if it's gonna rise. It does have a raising agent in it with the baking powder, but I wonder, I feel like without, we're gonna put that in now. I feel like without the um, dusted walnuts, it may not have the structure it needs to rise at all. So this may end up being a very shallow, very chewy bar, which would be fine. That sounds kind of like just a dessert granola bar. It has oats. So I'm going to start to clean up and then I think, oh, timer, timer, 20 minutes. <laughs> Not doing that again. <laughs> oh, we're going to clean up the kitchen and then I'll pull up the stool, make some tea and we can have a chat. I guess when I say have a chat, it makes it sound like I have something very serious to talk about. Like I need to tell you about the birds and the bees or that I'm like <laughs> divorcing my dog. But um, I, it, I have nothing in particular in mind. <sighs> You're talking about streaming Animal Crossing. I am not, although that has been requested. Has been requested. Start with League of Legends. <laughs> oh boy. I Listen, I've played League. It's not pretty. Not pretty. <laughs> not, not good. Also, I feel like the golden age of MOBAs, if I really wanted to like grow as a streamer and hop games, what I would need to do is keep an eye out for like the next game style that's blowing up because I feel like battle royales are chilling out now like they never really die but you know like wow and mmos had their big day and now they're healthy but they're not like huge anymore and then um and then you had mobas and then like league and heroes of new earth and, and dota and all that had their big time and then people got into battle royales you can you can make an argument for overwatch but like these various game genres like they have their big boom and then over time they settle into a more stable rhythm and if I really wanted to branch out, the ideal thing to do would be to keep an eye for the next big boom. Although I feel like I'm just too old to be doing that. I don't want to chase trends. I'm lazy. <laughs> they move too fast. Um, I moved my coffee maker, so I can't put this away in the right spot. 
It's not like I'm trying to hide the fact that I drink coffee. I just wanted my counter to look like cleaner. There's usually a toaster and a coffee maker back here, but I don't like, I can't hide their cables. It's not even the machinery I want to hide. It's the open cables that bother me on, on camera. Okay. Oh, have you seen my mug? Mm. It's got the, it's got the wonderful day. That's my merch plug of the day. Also, it's got the lemon tree in the back, which is kind of a lot of pressure because now I cannot let my lemons die <laughs> because I put them on merch. I, merch wise, really want to change the whole strategy and do more collections, but also do things for a more limited time this year. And to that end, I've been wanting to retire like the, uh, pardon me, the, like the cat merch and, you know, to, you just to have the store take a break for a while while I figure out what's next. But I felt like that would be really rude to do right now with everything going on because I don't want to pressure anybody to spend money when they don't have money right now. So I will <laughs> just, you know, put that off for the time being and figure that out later. There was enough to be getting on with. But that is something that I'm intending to do eventually. Uh, do you think you'll make more gold selling Zenithid directly or crafting Unbridled Fury? It depends on whether or not you have the capacity to get maximum procs. So if you are an alchemist that has rank 3 Unbridled Fury and you have the tool of the trade so you can get your Potion of Prosperity, and the Unbridled Fury price is pretty good, then yes, because you can get like a double crafting rate at that point, and that's much better and you can still sell those. If you do not have the capacity to get procs, then it's going to depend about the value of herbs to potions. And that's something that TSM can tell you, tell you. But if you're just looking for sheer speed, you can't really go wrong with offloading straight in it. It's just quite fast. So brown sugar going away. And then uh, dishes to the sink. Spray down the counters. I always clean things on the weekends, but we spent so much time at home this weekend that I was like around all of the clean space much more and it was all, I just, I get really happy when everything's like clean, you know, like when everything's wiped down and vacuumed and maybe it's just because we have the dog that sheds so very much. Like you can kind of, you can't really see his hair on the carpet unless he's been like shedding clumps of it, but you can, when it's been freshly vacuumed, you're like, oh, this is what clean looks like. <laughs> Don't mind my, my dishwashing fashion. Um, so I, I feel like I may end up, I guess if we're both home more, then that's a perfectly good reason to clean a little bit more. But I like, <laughs> in the absence of stress baking, I like stress cleaning because, you know, you're making the space that you're spending time in a little better. And also organizing is fun. Didn't play BDO for some reason, I got motion sick. That's that. I always start streaming Rage Shadow Legends. Listen, if I had a dollar for every time that they've asked to pay me to promote Raid Shadow Legends. Like, I mean every other streamer slash YouTuber in the world. I'm sure all of us have like 50 deleted emails being like, yo, promotion for Raid Shadow Legends? Like, everybody gets this. But it's, it's kind of funny. It's like a sitcom character at this point. Just like that familiar face in your email. Just like, nope, not today, Lenny. I don't know why it's always a Lenny in my head. Ah. Hello, how are you, Hazel Sabrinador? I am doing pretty good. We are baking today, and I'm, I'd say like 62% optimistic this is gonna turn out well. I think my, my alteration to the recipe may not pay off, but you know, regardless, it'll, it's an experience. Do you have any Warcraft utensils? I don't. Um, my WoW kitchen equipment kind of starts and ends with the apron, unfortunately, although, I don't know if it's that unfortunate. I, my office and my wardrobe have been so fully and entirely consumed by WoW merch and logos that it almost feels nice to have safe zones that don't just have WoW stuff everywhere because my office is just like WoW exploded in there. You've just got like the pillows and the plushies and the posters and it's just nonstop WoW IP. So it's nice to have some areas where I can feel like a person with my own life. Not that my own life spans too much outside of WoW, but sometimes I like to pretend. Love your stream, representing an eSport company, preparing for a large event. Uh, you can contact me via my email, but I should caution you, um, I don't usually go to events at the best of times, and these are not the best of times. Uh, finally getting a cat, tips on how to figure out a name that's not super cliche. Ooh, um, um, I, if I, my first thought, is 
my schools of thought of where pet names can come from and ways that I've named my pets in the past. Three different situations. So the first one is pop culture references to pop culture that is that you are enjoying at the time. So my cat is named Kira, and we were uh, we were watching Death Note at the time uh, that we got her. So that's kind of where that came from. But it also just sounds like a nice, you know, elegant female cat name. So that's one way. Um, another way is if you're feeling less pop culture inclined, you can take names or fragments of names from places either around you or in places that you really love to visit. My family dog growing up, I won't say the exact name because that's I think quite a few different like security answers, but my family dog growing up had a name inspired by a local, um, by a local geographical feature and uh, and her name was kind of an homage to the land, so to speak. So that's another option. And then a third way that I really like is to take really archaic people names. So some people get weird if you give your pets like real people names because if you have, if you have your friend over and your friend's name is, uh, what are people named? Greg, if you have your friend Greg over and then your cat's named Greg, maybe Greg feels weird about, about Greg the cat. But it, you're less likely to run into that if you pick like a really archaic odd name like Gladys, you are less likely to have a friend Gladys come over, and also that's an adorable cat name. So I would look for old, strange names. I love, you know, so to speak, old people names for, for animals are three places that I, you could look for. Stream Pokemon Sword and Shield raids? Could. I, didn't, I played Sword and Shield, and I finished the game, and I was proud that I beat the game because it had been a while since I had, like, completed any RPG. I'm big on starting games, not so hot on finishing them. Um, so I finished the game and I liked the raids a lot, but I got kind of discouraged because I wanted to grind alchemies to try to find a, what are they called? The, the special evolution. I wanted basically the alchemy that evolves into the big cake or like mega powers. I completely forget the terminology, but turns into the big cake, you know what I mean? And those are not easy to get. And then, usually, like, usually when I want a Pokemon, it's because I want to use it during my campaign. So I don't want to wait until I'm finished the game to get it, because usually at that point I'm done. And I usually want them pretty early, so I have that time to spend with them and bond with them. And that's just not really conducive to Sword and Shield all that much. So typically the way I play Pokemon games now is I will just pick, like, the first six that have a fairly good type coverage that you get pretty early that appeal to me for whatever reason, and then I'll just stick with those because I know I'll like Pokemon more just by virtue of spending the time with them. I can get the coolest Pokemon ever, but if I get it at the end of the game, I'm not going to remember it because I didn't spend any time with it. Okay. I'm going to wipe down those counters. Actually, I'm going to wipe up this syrup bottle. Oh, I love people's name for pets. <laughs> Dang it, George! I also really like that. Um, I also really like that, but I understand how it might feel strange if, uh, I don't know, I understand how it might feel strange. I think, um, incidentally, not recommending that you name your cat Hazel, but I think Hazel's a great pet name. <sighs> My mom's name is Gladys, she hated it, went by Holly. I, I like both names quite a lot. I think that's about thousands of Gladyses are shriveling now. I think Gladys is a pretty name. I keep the names they come from the shelter with, but I did have a cat called Persephone. Uh, Greek Roman mythology name is always cool. That's true. Um, I think for myself, um, Sefi for short, like obviously being able to abbreviate it is nice. I, um, I have a syllable limit for names. <laughs> I don't want a pet name to be more than two syllables, otherwise I just get tired of saying it. And if you have a really long name and you're not thinking ahead of time about how that's going to be shortened, that can result in some pretty funny nicknames. Oh man, rename my cat jerk, oh no. The only Gladys I know is the painting Phoebe did in Friends. I remember that one. Oh boy. That was, that was wild. I love overly regal names for pets and stuffed animals like my teddy bear Lord Hugglesworth. <laughs> I think that's why I like Reginald so much as a name option for the Shadow Bar Patchling. I think that's really cute. Okay. Clean the lid too, because I'm sure there's some crusty syrup in here. And then wipe down the counters, make some tea. What kind of tea should I make? Maybe a black tea. Do I sound like I need more caffeine? I feel like I'm peppy enough. My cat's name, Pills E, after a pill-popping cartoon squirrel. 
from an internet cartoon called Foamy the Squirrel. Twitchy's kitten ever so it fits. That's really cute. As a kid mom said, kids called her Happy Bottom Gladys. As a kid mom said, kids called... I My brain is not parsing that sentence. I understand it probably makes sense, and I just can't figure out where to break it up. Reginald is a great name. You can say Reggie for short. Reggie brings my mind immediately to Archie, like the, the Archie character, although... I should be clear, I have not seen Riverdale. Uh, we watched the first season of Riverdale and then we're like, this isn't <laughs> what I wanted. I was a big fan of like the Archie comics as a kid. Um, I had a, a whole bunch of them and I'd read them endlessly. And then I was all excited they were making a TV adaptation and then it was not what I wanted. <laughs> oh, no, a 50, 75 kilogram lean burger dog called Hercules and a Malamute called Zeus. I think I've met Huskies called Zeus. I feel like that's a pretty good big dog name. Other kids called her mom Happy Bottom when the mom was young. Other kids called her mom Happy Bottom. That's very strange. That's no good. Uh, good idea hopping off the Riverdale train. It's gotten even more insane. And I mean, I respect its right to exist because I love me some insane TV. It's just typically I'll go for insane foreign TV because that lets me like separate my brain enough that I don't get hit with like the cringe factor. Um, it's just I wanted, I wanted a more straight faced Archie adaptation. Oh, I get it. Thank you. <laughs> I did not get Gladys for the longest time. Hazel, your limited amount of free time. BDO needs your guides. <laughs> oh, that's very sweet. I can't promise anything because I need a few more of me. Uh, when I got my cat, my husband called him Mewtwo. We got our dog, he called him Goldan. I'm afraid what name he might pick when we've got a baby. <laughs> you could let him pick um, the baby's like internet name. Can you imagine growing up as a kid and then when you, like, you, your parents already gave you your internet handle <laughs> and you, like, already have your internet presence as you're growing up? So, like, all of us, I'm assuming, picked our own internet handles or, like, they came from nicknames given by friends. Imagine growing up and then already having one because your parents gave it to you when they named you. Like, they gave, it, they gave you separate names, kind of like what T&E have done. Um, although I'm sure their child will have agency to change it if later if they want to. But that would be really strange. Oh man, uh, ever tried Final Fantasy XIV? Loved it, but simply don't have the time, self-control to manage two MMOs. I liked it well enough. I think I prefer BDO over Final Fantasy because BDO has less overlap with WoW. So I feel like they scratch different itches for me. But Final Fantasy was fun. It was cute. As a cat, oh, also my cat as a young kid. <laughs> my brain just read that. As a young cat, my name was, oh. Also, my cat is young kid was named Evie. Evie is unquestionably more of a fox. Yeah, but it's such a cute name. I love that. Did I wipe the counter? I meant to. Yeah, I think I did. Oh well. Uh, tea time. Mm. That's coming out in five minutes. I'm gonna check. Oh, you know what? That got some height. I, I'm not mad. Well, it had a good bit of height to begin with, I suppose. I feel like it's taller than it went in there. It's got a smoother surface. It's kind of browning somewhat. I feel like it might really need the icing sugar to make it pretty, and we do have icing sugar. I just don't know if I believe enough to like cut out the maple leaf and then individually dust each square. That sounds like too much work, but I could maybe just like haphazardly fling icing sugar artfully across the surface. That's a possibility. Love the waves. Why, thank you. I washed it last night and uh, I blue, dry, I blue dried it out. I blue dried it. <laughs> I blue dried it. It is blue. I haven't straightened it yet. I want to try and learn more. I want to get better at hairstyling just because if I'm going to be on camera all the time, that's a good enough excuse to indulge in vanity, I think. And I've, I've, um, if I'm going to spend this much money on my hair anyways, it, I may as well feel cute every day if I can. So I'm finally replacing my hair straightener. I'm still using to this day the hair straightener that I got at the age of 16, it's 11 years old. Uh, my mom got it for me. <laughs> and I have, I'm, it's, I mean, I'm still using the same one. So I've ordered a new one that I'm gonna try out that has some more, I think it has cooler settings. I feel like mine is too hot and that's why I don't wanna use it for too long because I don't wanna damage my hair. Um, but then I end up not doing small enough sections. I'm just never patient enough. I think the biggest thing for learning how to style my hair has been taking that stool into my bathroom so that I can sit down while I'm working on blow drying or straightening my hair 
because otherwise I rush through it too much because I'm just tired and I want to leave. Whereas if I like settle in and I'll have like my water bottle on the counter, then I feel like I'm in the mood to like stay for a bit. Okay, so I'm boiling water, which indicates that I plan to make black tea. I think that sounds true. That's what would go nicely with the tarts anyways. And <laughs> blue dried Kentucky style, what do you drink it? This is just water. This is my, this is my overly trendy off-brand hydro flask, but I just fill this thing up with water like four times a day. <sighs> I had friends, uh, it was busy last time that I mentioned this, I had friends that named their kids Illidan and Alex Straza, no joke, it was weird. So do they go by Dan and Alex? Because I feel like that's fine. Sort of, you know, you just have the longer version of it embarrass you when you're getting ID, but aside from that, you can just kind of go by Alex, but, <laughs> you know, there's no guarantee that Illidan gets shortened to Dan. You could try just calling him Illy D. Uh, it's wrong with curly hair? Nothing's wrong with curly hair. I find that it tends, I just like having, I really like longer hair on me, and when your hair is curly, it's much shorter, and it's also harder to kind of control the shape. Um, I just prefer not straight, but not ringlet curls for myself because my hair, this isn't even my natural curl. This is blow dried out once. I have naturally, I want to say like what, 2B? Really tight ringlets. Ah, oh, man. Uh, Leoric? Leoric sounds neat. Yeah, Leoric shortens to Leo. Uh, forever gonna call Illidan Illy D. <laughs> I think that I, we, we've been calling Ilganoth Illy G because Ilganoth just sounds too pretentious for somebody that is essentially a big pile of goo. And, uh, and I feel like that's just kind of broken the, the dam on the Illy vowel. It's the name he uses on his rap island, right? So I'm thinking, I'll show you my collection of black tea. It's a little sad right now. I actually, when I was at the store, just bought a big box of Twinnings English breakfast because I just kind of wanted to have something really simple on hand. I'm not against a good cheap bag of tea. I have this one. This is a, um, Panyan Congo. I want to say it's a Chinese tea, but maybe it's African. It's never going to focus. That's fine. You'll trust me. And it's got like a really pretty, hang on, if I get off screen, then it'll focus. It's got a really pretty big full leaf, but it just doesn't brew very well. I need to experiment with this because the first couple times I've made it, it's turned out really weak and just kind of sad. And it's like not, it's too bitter to drink without milk, but then you add milk and you're just drinking milk. And I haven't really figured that one out yet. So I haven't had much of that. Um, I really like... Where did it go? Uh, that's loose leaf English breakfast. This is an Assam tea, which is one of my favorite uh, types of black tea. This is a really basic, fairly cheap one, but it's just got a really good, strong flavor to it. I think I might make that again. I think I'm gonna make that one. <sighs> um, I also have like my tall tin. So this is more cheap bag tea. This is the peach one. This is my Earl Grey. Um, I like these tins because you can fill fill them up good, but they also seal. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one. Probably use my green pot. Rap Island, my brain short-circuited rap album. I totally bought Rap Island. I assume that's just a thing that I must not know about. <laughs> there are so many things that I'm out of the loop on that people can just say things that aren't true to me and I'll be like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'd rat, like, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna call somebody out on something. I don't know everything. Oh man. Uh, giving your children Celtic names with con constant sounds make English speakers really confused. We do not comprehend um, Celtic names well at all. Like, I don't, even I don't really get them much myself. Uh, what time of day would you suggest drinking mint tea? My friend just gave me a bunch she's not fond of. I will drink mint tea directly after a meal, like if I have a big meal, or in the evening, because it's caffeine free and it's like kind of relaxing. It's also kind of bright, so you can drink it in the morning if you want just to have some tea that's not caffeinated, but usually I'll have like a big pot of mint tea after dinner, especially if it was like a heavy meal. Um, it's, it's theoretically helpful digestively, and, uh, and it's caffeine free, so nice for, nice for evenings. I'm just cleaning the gasket of this teapot. I never, I never took it off the lid before, and uh, it's got some water deposits on it, so give this a little bit of a, a, little bit of a rub down. It can be really satisfying. Uh, maybe one day I'll do that as like, I kind of want to, and I, I'll never have time, but I kind of want to do just experimental videos for like a second channel that have nothing to do with gaming or like anything ever, but just to kind of experiment with different techniques of filming or, you know, teach myself things technically. 
And one that would be really fun would be cleaning all of my tea wear, like deep cleaning and removing like the tea stains from all of my tea wear, because it's not dirty, but, and, but it can kind of affect the flavor of the tea. And it's also just really satisfying to clean off all of those tea marks. And I have quite a bit of it. I have quite a few well-loved teapots and teacups. And uh, I'm not very good at filming outside of my normal desk setup. So, so videos like that, or like a houseplant tour would be, I think, useful to help teach me more about how to light and record and frame shots that are not just at my desk because I want to be able to do that eventually. What am I doing? I'm looking for my, my, this, this is the big basket. It comes with that teapot and fits right in the top and it has lots of room for your leaves. That is, when did that, my timer's done. Is it done recently? Uh, it doesn't look burnt, so that's good. But honestly, I did not notice it going off. Let's take this out. Oh, all right, so. It's nicely browned on the top. It's not, um, it's not burnt looking. It moved as though still liquid when I pulled it out, but I think it's just gonna have to chill and we just won't cut it for a while because if I, if I bake it more, it's going to burn. Oh man, uh, do you like an iced tea? Not often, um, I'm more, given the opportunity, I prefer iced coffee and hot tea. Um, I'm going to put this onto a rack and uh, let it cool that way. I think this is going to be quite chilly by the time it finishes setting. Okay. Uh, did I put my tea in? I did not. Tea? Mm. I love drinking a mint tea while I'm writing in the evening for something nice and warm to drink. I do the same thing. I do the same thing. I'll do either a mint or a roy bush. I like a good red tea. I have this honey bush that I get from Stash, and uh, that one's a really nice raid tea. Although often I will find that I've forgotten to prepare my tea early enough. I'm always late for raid. <laughs> I'm always like scrambling around trying to like slap dinner in a plate and grab my water and find my glasses and <laughs> change my pants and like 17 different things like right when the raid is getting ready to go. I am that person that always needs a summon. Don't worry, it just beeped. Okay, okay, cool. Good video ideas. I just, I want to do a lot, but I feel like it's a very common affliction of life to have lots of ideas and not enough energy to get it all done. Uh, bookworm, thank you very, pardon me, Jolly Bookworm. How could I besmirch your jolly name like this? Thank you for the two month reset, appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna go blow my nose, I'll be right back. Uh, how do I do this without you hearing me blow my nose? Cause that's awkward, let's mute. There we go. <laughs> I am only the tiniest bit sick, but I didn't want to be like sniffing, sniffing too much on screen. Ah, do you have a special pair of rain pants? Well, if I was wearing like jeans or leggings that, that are like tighter or like shorts or anything like that, I want to change into a sweatpant or a pajama pant. I want to raid in comfy pants, you know? <laughs> there's, no, there's no sense raiding in like your, your business casual. We heard all that. Did I meet the wrong one? Uh, let's see. One of the best times to be still on your 18 year free trial of life. I work in an entertainment venue area. Everything's been canceled. No work and no pay. Nice distraction. Thanks, Hazel. I'm here. I'm here. I am oh, really grateful that I am in a fortunate position to be able to keep doing what I'm doing without really much interruption at all. And I intend to, I intend to keep doing it as much as I can. Um, I was, I was originally looking to take a little bit of time off before Shadowlands Alpha, but I didn't really need it all that bad. And we can, we can worry about that down the road after everything's wrapped up because I feel like having some online content can't hurt. <sighs> I'd need to mute for blowing my nose too. I sound like a small elephant. I just never know. I feel like sometimes it's elephant-like and then sometimes it's dainty, but I never know until I've done it. And I didn't, I didn't want to risk that one. <laughs> Oh man, I really appreciate you guys um, and your your social contact through the stream because it's nice all the time because I don't get out enough, but it's extra nice right now to be able to have like the little 
a little daily spot to like chat and catch up and see how everybody else is doing and check in and normal. <laughs> Hazel, you be Canadian? I am. Um, I am currently in America. I have emigrated per se, but I am, I'm from Vancouver Island. <sighs> well, hopping on wow now to hunt for jelly for my, for my bee baby. <laughs> mm. You won't regret it. Also, it's now is kind of a much better time to do it than when it came out because I was picking up some jelly just to sell to, I have to stop myself from saying selly every time I say that. I was picking up some jelly to sell and it's so much easier to get now because they're of the reduced competition. Ah, oh, man. Okay, I am going to prepare my cup. I am feeling this one. I only have one set of mugs where I have two of the same mug. Everything else is a one fur mug. And this one, I mean, they're mass produced, but they've got like a pretty little lotus on them. And I like these with like a good black tea because I feel like the combination of the, what is that? Like a fleur de lis print. Uh, it's too much glare, you're never gonna see. And like the, the lotus flower gives me vaguely Indian vibes. It also has like a paisley down below. And this is an Indian black tea. So in my brain, it works out. Um, let's take this out. And then for my black teas, if I am gonna take it with milk, I do a little bit of skim milk. I tried switching to 2% because I wanted to try to use the same milk for tea and coffee, but I just can't do fatty milk in, in tea. I just can't do it. Okay. What time is it? About quarter after 11? That's not too bad. I guess it was a, a, a fairly fast recipe to begin with. Naturalized American with dual citizenship. Watch like 10 streamers on Twitch and eight of them are Canadian. I feel like Canadians like show up pretty well um, in the field of content creation and also esports, given our relatively lower population to America. I feel like, and maybe I'll look up some population numbers so I'm not just talking out of my butt, but I feel like there's like America people wise, huge, like vastly, vastly bigger than, uh, than Canada. It was something like 3%, like if you had 100 Americans, there's like three Canadians to every 100, something like that, but let me find out. So American population. Get some Google numbers real quick. Uh, 330 million, approximately. Canadian population, 37 million. So <laughs> not, not bad, actually, not bad, actually. Uh, that's quite a big difference. So given those ratios, um, I feel like Canadians overrepresent in those fields, which I'm, pr I'm, I'm proud of us. I always have to, you know, within reason, as long as they're not doing anything too wacky, I always like to, to, to root for fellow Canadians in whatever it is they're doing. The uh, K-pop group that I like the music of, um, NCT, one of their front people, their more popular members is from Vancouver. Um, so I always have to root for whatever Mark's doing because <laughs> he's, uh, he's holding it down for the West Coast. But this, tea perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, I think so. And then a little bit of milk. And then the nice thing about using metal straws with your tea is that it means you don't have to get a spoon dirty because you can just stir your tea with your straw. And it works out. So I think I can turn this off. I don't think I need my oven mitts any further. Straws. Delivery. Careful, oh boy. <laughs> he has a cat and a laptop. <laughs> and it would be bad to spill tea on either of those things. Um, our cat is not respecting his work-life space very much <laughs> with his, with his home, home working thing. Uh, Rush is from Canada too, I'm buying metal straws right now. I, I feel like I wish I could stand here and be like, I am doing my part from the environment. And, and truly I do try to wherever it's reasonable to do so. But I only use my metal straws at home in situations that it wouldn't. Do I have lipstick on my, what happened here? How did I do that? <laughs> oh, when I was blowing my nose probably. Um, I, I'm not really using metal straws in places I would have used plastic straws otherwise, except maybe bubble tea. I do have metal boba straws. I don't like take them out with me, but we also don't get drinks out very much. I have a very hard time. Like it's bad enough in my brain. I prefer to avoid drinking calories whenever I can. And then when I'm in a proposition where I'm gonna be A, drinking my calories and spending $4.50 on them, it's just a little much. Mm. Have you tried overnight oats? Bit obsessed at the moment. 
I have tried them because husband's had an overnight oats phase. He was making them for a while. He has like his own jar and stuff. And I tried his and they were nice, but I want my breakfast to be hot. I don't want cold, cold food in the morning. It's my problem with cold cereal. It's my problem with, I need, I need, I need warmth. Listen, I don't generate any of my own. And when I first wake up in the morning, I am chilled from the stupor of sleep. <laughs> I need hot food or else I'm not going to be okay. Oh man. Mm. Uh, it's good cold if you live in a hot region. I suppose so. That would make sense. That would make sense. Do you like waffles for breakfast? I love waffles, but I never have them. Um, I have a waffle iron. You want to see my waffle iron? It's, it's, uh, so you know how you go on Amazon, right? And you're like browsing for an appliance and it's an electrical appliance and you read the reviews and in any given electrical objects reviews, there's going to be at least three people that are like this burned down my house and my dog died and my wife left me and I no longer have eyebrows every single product because of just how many reviews are there are, I guess, and <laughs> the volatility of electrical current, I don't know. Um, so I end up overthinking and getting freaked out when I read those things. And you'd think it would lead me to buy more expensive things so that there's a reduced chance of them burning my house and singeing my eyebrows. But <laughs> what usually ends up happening is I then don't want to spend a bunch of money on something that burns down my house and removes my eyebrows, I would rather spend a cheap amount of money and then if it breaks, then that's fine because it was cheap. Depending on the object, I, I, I don't buy in the middle. I go way too cheap or way too expensive. But this is one of those things that was way too cheap because I'm like, well, I just, we only need a few waffles. So it's like a, it's one of those dash things. It works just fine, honestly. It has not burned down my house. I still have my eyebrows. It makes a perfectly fine individual waffle, but when you're making waffles for two people, it takes a while. <laughs> This would be great if you were a single person that wanted to make waffles for yourself um, and you had the tiniest batch of waffle batter ever. This would be great for that. But as soon as you have more than just one person, it's not enough anymore. Um, so, uh, and I don't make waffles often enough. If I, if I did it like every weekend, if I was that motivated person that just like feels all chipper and sings in the morning on weekends, then I would get up early and make a batch of waffles for us. But I just, you know, if it's a weekend morning, and it's a Saturday, so I'm not getting ready for stream. All I want to do is walk my dog and then make some coffee, curl up at my desk and play WoW for like four hours. <laughs> it's usually, usually my morning routine. Mm. It's a baby waffle maker. Yeah, it's on Amazon. Um, I've also seen them in like Targets and stuff. They're, they're cheap, 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 cheap. Single person want waffles for myself, but I'd need like 10 of those. You used to make waffle makers that made little penguins. You could put a, scream, spook, a, a spook of ice, man, I'm, illiterate at this moment. You could put a spoon of ice cream on the belly. Mm. Overwatch has a cookbook. They're, they do. They do. So looks like that. Um, available on Amazon, which is where I bought it, because usually they're cheaper on Amazon than they are on Blizzard Gear, which is strange. And the premise of this one is they do it by region. So they have various, um, they have various regions of the world, including the moon. <laughs> that various heroes come from and they're broken down by that and that's a cool concept but I never say oh I want to cook through all of the um Australian food instead I go I'm looking for desserts or I'm looking for breads and that's how like the wow cookbooks and the hearthstone cookbooks are broken up and this makes it much harder for me to like browse and find the thing that I want because I can't remember who each thing was attached to but there's a variety, there's like, there's lots of different types of things. There's cocktails, there's desserts, there's breakfast, there's lunches, there's baked stuff. There's like, there's a cream pie there. Um, there's lots of recipes in it. And the recipes are all pretty good, at least as far as I've seen. Um, Chelsea Monroe Castle does all of the Blizzard branded cookbooks and she's excellent. Um, I've never been really all that led astray by any recipe that she's done. What food is popular on the moon? You want to hear about the moon recipes? Uh, because, you know, Winston. So let's see, this is Asia Symmetra, the moon. Uh, Winston and also Ham, Hamlet, is that what his name was? The hamster? Okay, yeah, Winston and Wrecking Ball, pardon me. Uh, so the first one is pineapple pizza. <laughs> pineapple pizza. Uh, it's got a pizza dough recipe and then it wants you to add ham, pineapple, bacon, and red onion, which is indeed the proper Canadian way to make a Hawaiian pizza. Uh, Hammond, thank you. <laughs> I knew Hamlet sounded wrong. Uh, you have Horizon Lunar Colony Pies, you have Moon Pies, 
which um, I think there's like an American baked good that you can buy in stores. I've never really had them. Um, it looks fine, I suppose. It's like a marshmallow fluff thing. They do have Brigadero in the Brazilian part. They do. Um, I, think I, I think I showed them very briefly. There's peanut butter pudding, which is a Winston recipe. Uh, hamster food for our good friend Hamlet, Hammond, <laughs> uh, which is kind of like a, a, a rice crispy. It's like a jazzed up rice crispy square. Uh, there's a cheese wrecking ball. Oh, wow. What is that? It's like a big cream cheese, a big cream cheese thing. <laughs> A big cream cheese puff? It's a cheese ball. It's a sesame seed covered cheese ball. That's very odd. Um, it looks good, but that seems like a weird thing to just bite into. And uh, yeah, it's a nice reference. They're amazing. Uh, do they have empanadas in there? So which area would that be in? Also, I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's a great cookbook. You should totally get it if you're interested. Uh, the Brazilian section. Uh, Lucio has, I'm going to butcher all the pronunciations, but yeah, you've got, he's kind of around page 51. So there is your, your, uh, Brigadeiros. Again, apologies for my pronunciation. You have a, like a fish soup situation. You have a cheese, uh, like another cheese puff situation. And, uh, yeah, lots of stuff. Are cheese balls not a thing in Canada? Are they a thing anywhere? It's just a ball of cheese. You just, what do you, it looked huge. You're just supposed to like eat it. I'm, it's like an apple, but it's just cheese. It's for dipping. Oh, with crackers. Why wouldn't you just have dip in a bowl? Walk around eating my softball sized cheese ball, right? It's weird, right? I've never seen that before in my entire life. I don't know if you've got egg balls in America, but they're really nice. Have not heard of egg balls for dipping. This might start a debate. I didn't realize that there was so much, um, so much enthusiasm for cheese balls. I've never seen them before. Nary is the food group that's the easiest to weaponize. I want to know. Oh, no, that's, I don't think that's going to meaningfully um, set within the duration of this stream. Initially, I wanted to have it chill to the point where I can cut it and then show it to you on this stream, but I feel like we might be here for a while. <laughs> it's a bar food. Cheese balls are small finger food here in the US. Cause I mean, I've seen like mozzarella sticks. That's a thing. Um, but that one just, it really just looked like a big softball of cream cheese. Maybe we'll have to make them. Maybe I'll put them on the pole. Want a bread bowl now? Hazel's gonna start fighting in Wisconsin with the cheese ball hate. Not hate, just a lack of understanding and familiarity. <laughs> now I want cheese curds. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to put more stuff from the cookbook on the baking stream, uh, the baking stream things, because otherwise I'm never gonna make them. Um, there's stuff from France. There's some German recipes here, but uh, they always they always really go in on um, variety. Like these are not short cookbooks, and they have such beautiful photography. I think I think this was one of the options that I put on the poll this month that didn't get voted for. It's like a like a creme caramel, like a flan situation. <sighs> Although I think that's the kind of thing you have to serve immediately. <laughs> oh man. I never do end up making all the cocktails. I feel like I'm just not a big enough drinker to justify owning the various kinds of alcohol that I need to prepare cocktails. But I've been taking kind of an alcohol break recently, not for any particular reason, aside from just feeling a little healthier without it and uh, wanting to have nicer skin. <laughs> I feel like my skin gets really sad when I drink, so I feel like if I don't drink, then maybe I'll be prettier. Mm. You're right, cat. <laughs> yeah, I think she just jumped on the... I have the placemats on our coffee table, and I think she jumped on one and skidded a little bit. Creme caramel, basically flan. Go for some loco moco rice, patty, egg, brown gravy. Mm. I am going to be starting lunch eventually. I think I might start to open up. I have like a big pack of tofu in my fridge that I haven't opened yet because once I open it, I usually want to eat it within like a week or so. And uh, I like tofu, but I'm the only one that can eat it in the house. So I need to have a plan for how I'm going to consume the entire pack of tofu before it goes bad. And the only two things I really do is I will stir fry it with garlic and ginger and soy sauce and then have that with like my rice and veggies. 
or I will cube it up and then put it into miso soup. I kind of want to make miso soup today, but miso soup's not really a meal. It's more of a snack. I feel like it's not filling enough to be like a whole meal. Uh, creme fraiche, I hear people like that. I want to say it's like a, almost like a sauce, but I'm not 100%. Not 100% about that. Uh, your lactase tabs with me everywhere as a treat. <laughs> oh man, I don't have enough time uh, bot command, but we have been live for about 90, 94 minutes, hour and 34 minutes, and we're getting close to wrapping up. Usually we do a two hour stream, but we are finished a bit early today. Um, I will, today's Monday, so tomorrow morning is going to be the Mount Run stream. We shall be back in Blackrock Foundry. And during that stream, at some point, either before or during or after, remind me and I will slice a piece of it and show you guys what the finished product turned out to be. Um, uh, pretty low, but Twitch is always super quiet for me. I managed to turn up the other microphone at my other computer um, via the mixer that I use. But this microphone goes directly into the computer. And it looks like if I turn it up any higher, then it could potentially be peaking if I get excited or if I start talking down here. So I want to, I, I would rather be a little quiet than painfully loud, given the opportunity. <sighs> cheese balls aren't just cheese. They have all kinds of different ones, different nuts mixed with various meats. <clears throat> so what's in this one? I'm, I, you know what? I wrote off the cheese ball too quickly. <laughs> um, oh, this looks good. There's a, this is, this is like a May recipe. There's some, some, some Chinese mento buns. Those look really tasty. I love a good steam bun. I didn't realize I loved steam buns until I had them. Wow, what a dumb sentence. Obviously I didn't know I liked them until I had them, but I, I had them really late in life. I only tried them for the first time like, like a couple years ago. Um, there's a really lovely tea place in Portland called the Tao of Tea. They have a couple of locations. And they will serve you various types of teas, but they'll also serve you various like snack foods that are commonly had with teas around the world. And they had some really lovely steam buns. And uh, it's not something that I've ever tried to make at home. Okay, so the cheese wrecking ball. <laughs> I guess I should have been tipped off by the fact that it appears to be surrounded by Triscuits. Prep time, 10 minutes. Chilling time, one hour. Yields one cheese ball. <laughs> uh, eight ounces cream cheese, eight ounces white cheddar and then some dried onion, garlic, sesame seeds, poppy seeds. So basically they want you to combine the cream cheese and the cheddar. So you have a pound, an entire 16 ounce pound of cream cheese and cheddar with some onion and garlic, mix it in a food processor, uh, using damp hands, form into a ball, a ball shape and then wrap in plastic and chill. While it is chilling, mix together sesame, poppy, rest of the garlic and the onion. And then you just roll your chilled cheese ball in the mixture Serve at room temperature. So where I'm losing it is this appears like this photo, maybe it's like the dried onion or something. This photo makes it look like it's been baked. Like that looks like a bagel that you bite into to reveal cream cheese, right? Like it looks like the color would indicate that that's something other than just a chilled ball of cheese with sesame seeds, poppy seeds, dried garlic and dried onion. But it can't be because that's the only thing in the recipe. Roll it in the top of the mixture, serve at room temperature with plenty of crackers. Weird, that's gotta be like a party food, right? Uh, <laughs> the cheese ball thing is confusing me. Yeah, like this is, this, this is a singular 16 ounce, like a whole pound of cheese. Like that would be softball sized. It's not, there's no bread component to it at all. Mm. It sounds good, but even as somebody who isn't lactose intolerant, just hearing that made my stomach gurgle. Yeah, I feel like because it's so much cheese, that has to be a party food where you have a lot of people over and it's an appetizer and hopefully people can, can hygienically extract their own cheese from it because you can't like, you know, it's, it's too much cheese for any one person. <laughs> good party dish. Yeah, I guess so. I just feel like with dips, you can allocate a smaller part to each person's plate. I usually have one at a family holiday. It's a chance I wanted to drink. The outside is rolled on top of nuts, fruits, meat. Mm. As long as nobody's double dipping. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. I kind of liked it better when I thought it was a bun. <laughs> it's just I looked at it and it didn't parse. I've never seen that before. 
Um, I wonder. I wonder if just because it says it's from the moon. Oh, but yeah, it's a pop. It's a pop lava recipe. All kinds of good stuff. I'll have to. We'll have lots of good options for a baking stream next month. Um, cheese knife to cut into it. Ah, yes, my cheese knife. I keep it right by my uh, cheese forks, which I know I'm. Lots of people have cheese knives and cheese forks. I just, I barely have a regular knife. I have like a chef's knife and that's where it is. I have, no, pardon me. I have a chef's knife and a bread knife. And that's the end of it. That's the end of my knife situation. Mm. Hit 110 in my squirrel all. Time to keep the ball rolling. See if I can be ready to go for Mythic Mondays tonight. Ooh, that's a marathon. I bet you can do it though. Family used to make a big cheese ball. Pepperoni and olive to look like an eye for Halloween parties. You just cut it up with a cheese knife, serve it on crackers. Ooh, now I want to see a cheese ball, but instead of a, instead of the, the wrecking ball thing, I want it to be a Nizoth eye. Although we're, we're getting, we're getting towards the end of the era for old god themed food items. I feel like this is kind of the last we're going to see them for potentially forever. So uh, maybe that window's closing. Old god cheese ball, right? Isn't that fun? Remember um, the first time we fought Ilganoth when he was like the eye in the tree? That would be a really cool like Halloween dish but I've never been one to make decorative food items very well. Uh, I usually just want to make it food. I want to make it edible and then I want to call it a day. Anyone hitting higher levels tomorrow is Wrath Time Walking. Get that gear. Mm. You can use butter knives as well. <laughs> I have a, uh, like, I guess it's, it's not really a butter knife like a, cause I've seen butter knives that are like shorter and a little bit squatter and they have like that shape to them. Um, I have like table knives, I guess, which I suppose you could also use just fine to serve a cheese ball. Um, but yeah, minimal cutlery. Although I do have three different, I do have a teaspoon and a tea pick in my cupboard. Um, this is, this is also good for home invasions, I suppose. Uh, you can, well, for defending, not for committing them. Don't do that. But you, you unscrew it and then you have like a little stabby. And then when you have like a, a dried cake of tea, you can use that to pry off chunks of it. And then you got to be careful because it is sharp. Uh, we call those butter knives. So growing up, we had a butter knife that was a different shape than that, that didn't have any serration on it at all. Um, and that would have been a table knife. But I've, I've heard those called butter knives too. Nyalotha ruined me, made a remark about how Ilganoth. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm not going to read the rest of that, but I'll let you know that I enjoyed it. <laughs> it was good. So I think I'm gonna wrap up. I think I'm gonna put away my sad little waffle iron. Um, this is, I can give you guys another look at that, but it's not gonna be set anytime soon. It still has kind of a concerning jiggle to it. I'm concerned that the lack of walnuts may have doomed that particular recipe. <laughs> I should have looked online for, um, I should have taken the idea of the Overwatch cookbook one and then looked online to try to figure out. So that's kind of the look, that's kind of the vibe, but you can see it's got a bit of a jiggle to it still. Um, we're going to let that finish cooling and then cool it in the fridge before we slice it. And then I'll show you guys how it turned out tomorrow. But yeah, I, I wanted to use the Overwatch recipe, but I should have just gotten like a different one that didn't use any walnuts. Uh, <laughs> got a bit of a jiggle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, thank you all so much for coming to my stream and for joining me today. I shall be back tomorrow. I'm back with the video games. We'll be in the other room playing WoW, doing our Blackrock Foundry mount runs. Uh, good stuff as always. Take care of yourselves. Uh, try not to stress too much. Stay home. Um, don't do anything I wouldn't do. And have a wonderful, wonderful 